Hey everyone, it's Dr. Tara Lynn, and I am super excited to have my colleague Martha Lewis on the podcast today. She is a sleep consultant, and you guys who listen to me, I write about sleep, I talk about sleep, because sleep is everything. So it's high time I brought in a, a real pro on sleep, and here's Martha. So Martha, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thanks, Dr. Terrilyn. I'm excited to talk yes. about sleep too, because I do believe that it is so important and so many of us struggle with it in this day and age. And, you know, that's how I got into it because I, um, I struggle with sleep for a couple of years. And for me, it started in late pregnancy, which I figured was just hormones. Um, then I had a baby and actually became a sleep consultant to help parents get their baby sleeping because he wasn't a great sleeper. And um, so I, I wanted to, to figure that out. But then after he was sleeping through the night at six months old, I still wasn't sleeping. And that went on for, <laughs> another, yeah, for another couple years. And at this point I had become a sleep consultant. I was still working full time, started you know my side business and um, had a baby too and was not sleeping and I was miserable. So, and it was super frustrating because I felt like I knew a lot about sleep and um, still <laughs> figured it out. So luckily my mentor, Dana Obelman, who I studied with uh, for baby sleep was also offering an, an adult sleep certification program. And so I did that training and made a few you know, tweaks to what I was doing before bed, the timing of what I was going, when I was going to bed and my activity level, cause that had changed a lot after having a baby. And for me, yeah. those were the, were the three keys that, um, that really got me sleeping a lot better. And now I sleep great almost every single night. You know, there's that occasional, uh, high stress times where, um, you know, you know, you have something big the next day and so you don't always sleep well, but that is, few and far between these days. So I'm just really passionate about sharing this information and helping people sleep and letting people know that they can get the sleep they need. And it's really our modern lifestyle <laughs> and busyness and yes. not care of ourselves <laughs> that, um, that is contributing to this epidemic that we're having. It is really an epidemic. And I, I think if we don't start there with sleep, we're not gonna get very far. Um, and you know, it's funny because I, I work with mental health, so anxiety and depression and there is, and I've had it myself, anxiety around going to bed, like anxiety around this idea that, am I actually going to sleep tonight? I want it so desperately. And that almost sets us up to not sleep in the first place because now we're caught up in our worry brain about sleep or waking up in the middle of the night with the, I do, I call it the countdown because you look at the clock and you're like, okay, um, if I fell asleep right now, I could get five hours of sleep. I can handle that. Oh crap. If I fell asleep right now, I could get three hours. That's going to suck really bad. You know, like it's yeah. the, it's a sleep countdown. And I think a lot of people are really stuck in that, um, whole, Thing. it's it's a mindset around sleep it's an it's an anxiety it's a worry um and it's everything i think it's funny when not funny haha -ha, but funny like you were a sleep consultant for everybody else right <laughs> there's a lot of irony in that yes <laughs> you know? exactly. yes i, I i'm just <laughs> yeah i'm just curious and i'm going to sideline the conversation for just a second because you're talking about kids with sleep and i know that um, I have a lot of moms that listen to this podcast. And so sideline, can you give any little tips? And I'm really throwing you under the bus because I didn't tell you <laughs> we were going to do this, but, uh, any tips on how to get your kids to sleep? Cause I know that's a huge thing for people. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the key of, you know, the philosophy that I follow is that, uh, babies and kids need to learn their own independent sleep process. So that's, you know, not relying on things like being nursed to sleep or rock to sleep or um, driven to sleep, like sometimes we end up doing for <laughs> naps, um, all those things. Because what happens is when, you know, a baby is helped to go to sleep, then as they transition from one sleep cycle through the next all night long, 
then they're more likely to wake up and wake up fully and need that, that help to go back to sleep again. So that's the underlying key is to um, give them the space to learn their own independent sleep skills. That's really important. And, and as you were saying that, I was thinking like, you know, those transitions in between sleep phases, um, if there's something that's um, distracting you during that time, whether it's like, you know, a bottle or the TV being on, you know, that's prime time to wake up during the transition of sleep cycles, you know? Exactly. So yeah. it feels the same thing. Like a television is like self-soothing to an adult, whereas a bottle or a pacifier or whatever is self-soothing to a child, right? Right. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, we don't want to interrupt the sleep phases because that interrupts the flow of sleep, you know, altogether. So that's, that's fascinating. So moms, if you heard that, like pay attention to what you said. It's so hard. It's very hard. I was a nanny when I was in my twenties and the kid was three, three, three and a half when I was doing this. And uh, he was tied to his bottle at bedtime. Right. So right. he would go to bed with a bottle and I will never forget one night the the nipple like split and it was the last nipple that we had in the house. And the mom is running around getting scotch tape, trying to tape the nipple back together no. so the kid could get to sleep. And I, I was like 22 and I'm like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> well, figure it out, you know, <laughs> Do you right. panic? Exactly. Uh, that's, that's my memory of being a nanny. I don't know. Whatever. Funny. <laughs> well, it's that. hard and it shows how desperate you know, we are to get our kids to sleep and for us to sleep too. So. <laughs> right. Right. Like yeah. who wants to be woken up in the middle of the night? Nobody, you exactly. know, nobody, nobody wants right. that, which kind of leads into, um, we were talking about the three mistakes people make when they can't sleep. And this is another really important conversation to have because the people that I work with either say they can't, they have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. Yep. And the staying asleep one almost seems worse than falling asleep because it's so disruptive that you can't get any good solid sleep in a row. So let's talk about what some of those mistakes are. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, the first thing is actually you don't want to stay in bed if you aren't sleeping. So I actually well, suggest, hold on. for how long, like how long do you stay? How long do you like find out? Like it's, is it as soon as you wake up, you get out of bed or? You, well, you, you know, I'd say about 10 or 20 minutes, but you, you know, you mentioned earlier looking at the clock. So you actually don't want to be doing that because what does that start with a slow cascade <laughs> of anxiety <laughs> and worry right. about how much sleep you're going to get. And really what we're right. worried about is how we're going to feel the next day. Like otherwise, you know, you're lying in bed in this relaxed state, not expected to do anything. That could be a really relaxing time, but it's the stress of thinking about how you're going to feel the next day that, right. that gets all worked up. Um, so yeah. yeah, if you think it's been about 10 to 20 minutes that you've been awake, then I actually suggest getting up out of bed and out of your bedroom and, um, and going to, to a different room where you can do a relaxing activity with the lights dim, um, again, for probably about 10 or 20 minutes or until you start to feel a little sleepy. No TV, right? No TV, no, no phone. TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, doing something like reading a book or if you're having tons of thoughts racing through your mind or you're worried about things the next day, then getting those down on paper um, or doing a crossword puzzle or making a grocery list, you know, just something um, not stimulating but that's relaxing, but to right. also take your mind off the fact that you weren't sleeping. And then once it's been about 10 or 20 minutes or you're feeling sleepy again, then you go back to bed. And then if you yeah. still don't sleep after another 10 or 20 minutes and actually get back out, up out of bed. And so the first few nights, this could be a lot of back and forth, but what we want your, what we want to have happen is your brain to associate your bed with sleep only. So uh -huh. So, you know, we don't want it to start associating um, your bed with lying there awake, which if you've been having trouble sleeping for a while, that's, that could be what's happening. So, and this could apply. That, makes, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, that that totally makes sense to me because, yeah. you know, when I think about my kids, right? So we had a whole bedtime routine, right? And so they associated this routine with winding down, going to bed. And if we have a negative association with our bed or bedroom, like that's going to impact our sleep. That Why didn't I think of that, Martha? Seriously. <laughs> It's funny. It's, it's something that seems very obvious, right? But it's actually not like right. common knowledge. It's not the first thing you find when you search for this stuff on the internet, you know? So. Yeah, right. Well, good. That's why we're talking about it here. Yeah, exactly. Know? But I, it is a, a really big key and, you know, and yeah. it also goes along with just having your bedroom for sleep and sex only and not using actually your bed or your bedroom for anything else. So you don't want work stuff there. You don't even want to be necessarily, if you're having sleep problems, like reading in bed before you go to sleep. Cause again, we want a strong association with bed equals sleep. So yeah, yeah. that's it. Bed equals sleep. Uh, exactly. I like that a lot. I, I want to circle back around when you said like, if you're having thoughts, like write them down mm -hmm. and I say this all the time because, and I've done it, there's a lot of mental space, <laughs> you know, if, if I have a lot of thoughts and I put them on paper, then I can tell myself, I already wrote that down. I don't have to remember it. It's time to go to bed. And I have, that rhetoric has run through my brain when I'm trying to sleep. So I don't, it's not really a problem anymore, but there was a time where it was a constant problem. And so doing something with the information in my brain to get it off my brain and then reminding myself, I already did that. There's right. no need to think about it anymore. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It works. It yeah. works. You know? So yeah, good. Awesome. But, see, I tell people all the time, like, um, cause I use essential oils in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, I, cause getting back to that association thing, like associating a smell with sleep, right? You know? Yep, mm -hmm. definitely. It's a great idea. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, same thing. Um, yeah, so the second mistake I was going to talk about, you actually already touched on when you mentioned the screens, <laughs> because... <laughs> Let's talk. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because you definitely want to avoid screens right before bed, and especially in the middle of the night, and it's so tempting, right, when you can't sleep to just pick up your phone, you see the time, you start looking stuff up or scrolling through Facebook or whatever it is. But there are two reasons not to do that. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, the blue light that's emitted from screen suppresses the production of melatonin, which is our sleepy hormone. And so we definitely, <laughs> you know, want melatonin levels to stay high if you want to have any chance of going back to sleep. So right. that's the main reason. Um, but also screens stimulate us and they make us wired but tired. And a lot of times the stuff you're looking up is going to make you stressed, you know, give anxiety, whatever. If you're looking up, I mean, I mean, I remember looking up, why am I not sleeping at three in the morning? And you find all kinds of crazy stuff, like <laughs> going through this why can't I sleep? crisis and yeah, all this stuff. It's like, okay, but now it's been months. Cancer. Months. Cancer. What? Yeah, <laughs> can't sleep. Exactly. So if you get stressed, while you are sleeping or trying, you know, while you're not sleeping, then that's stimulating cortisol, our stress hormone, mm -hmm. which suppresses melatonin, which mm -hmm. makes it practically impossible to go back to sleep. So that's another big one is to really, you know, avoid screens. And if that means that you don't even have your phone in your bedroom, you figure out another alarm clock or something, um, so that you're not even tempted to look at them in the middle of the night. You know, that is a really important piece of this for sure. Yes. And the other, the other piece is the television. Oh um, yeah. Talking about screens. Well, even things like, um, e-readers, you know, like book readers and stuff, because people have exchanged real books with electronic books. And I'm like, that's not good either, but I got to talk about the TV because, so I've been married now for 24 years, been with my husband for 26, and it's only been probably the last six months of our entire relationship that the TV has not been on because I finally pitched a holy enough shit fit to tell him, turn it, I can't take it anymore because it was, 
I would notice that I would wake up and I, I was waking up during the shifting of the sleep phases, you know? Yeah. And he would say, what do you mean? Every time I looked over, you were fast asleep. I'm like, well, clearly you weren't looking over when I was awake. So, <laughs> you know, but exactly. doing, doing that, doing that has changed so much for me. You know, and it was the weirdest thing because I remember the first couple of weeks of having that silence in the room, like there's no TV going on. And I'm like, doo, doo, doo. like it, <laughs> it feels, feels really quiet in here. Right. <laughs> you know? Now I'm like, yes, quiet, peace, calm, go to bed. You know, yeah. so that getting that out of there has changed. It's rocked my world. <laughs> With sleep. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, you know, he's not going to get murdered in his sleep because the TV's on. I'm trying to find the remote and whacking him trying to shut the TV off, you know? That's so. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I'm glad so that you got that fixed. I know. My husband yeah. can lie in bed at night before bed and scroll through Facebook and he sleeps just fine. So, you know, everyone's different. But if you are struggling with sleep, like these are the things to stay away from. And to at least give it a good, you know, week to a month and see if that makes I'd say a month, yes. Yeah. And I bet that it will. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember thinking, okay, the first week or so, like, it's just a weird getting used to the new thing, you know? So after right. it took about a month for me to be like, wow, this feels so different, you know, this yeah. feels so much better. So give whatever you're going to do a fair shake at a month at least. So, right. all right, we got the third one the third mistake yeah well and this kind of relates to everything we, well it definitely relates to everything we've been talking about as well I mean it's it's in the middle of the night we tend to think more negatively and so you know the mistake is to think that there's no hope to just you know declare yourself an insomniac or a bad sleeper or whatever these you know things that we tell ourselves and then you know not trying to fix it so um for whatever reason, we, you know, it's, it's way easier to be way more negative in the middle of the night and get sucked down this, <laughs> this rabbit hole of like, this is never going to change. And um, I'm so miserable and everything. And then you wake up the next morning, you're like, okay, I'm fine. Like I'm going to survive another day. Um, but right. again, like that worrying is going to stimulate cortisol, which we already talked about, which is going to make it impossible to go to sleep. So um, so that's just one of the big things is, is, you know, if you are, if you find yourself worrying in the middle of the night or thinking, you know, looking at the clock, thinking about how you're going to feel the next day, it's like, I like how to bad really, you're going to feel the next day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I recommend having some kind of sleep mantra, I call it. And so I have my, you know, work with my clients to pick something that, that resonates with them, but something like, you know, I'll be fine tomorrow because I always am. Or, you know, just remembering yep. like all the times that you haven't slept well and that it's actually not the end of the world the next day. Um, so, because again, we don't want <laughs> to increase that anxiety in the night. Um, so, right. yeah, that would be the the main thing there is to just do whatever you can to, to stay in this calm, relaxed state. And if you're well, getting to bed and going back, to, you know, um, know that it's yeah. temporary. So. Right. I, I want to talk about that idea that when you worry you're hard on yourself and for some reason we're hard on ourselves in the middle of the night. Um, you know, we talk about your body producing cortisol, you're stressed out when you're in your fight or flight, like you're in your, um, trying to save your life thing. And that's not a positive thing to be right. That, that's yeah. like a, everything is horrible. Like, what are we going to do? Like, you know, all of that. And so we're easy to turn it on ourselves and um, make it like a character flaw and defect and uh, about ourselves, um, which yeah. is, again, pushing us more into fight or flight, you know, um, so it's a vicious circle. So yeah. be kind, basically be kind on yourself if you wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yep, exactly. Be kind. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> All right. So yeah. what... As a, as a big takeaway, if somebody could only do one thing to help them improve their sleep, what would that one thing be? Hmm. That's a tough one because there are so many things. I mean, kind of everything right. you do during the day sets you up for whether you're going to get a good night's sleep or not. Everything you do before bedtime sets you up. So it is this very comprehensive 
pretty complex thing for something that should just be really easy. And for good sleepers is really easy. You just <laughs> fall asleep. Um, well, I think that's why, I think that's why so many people say like, well, you got to get better sleep. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. How do, how do I do that? You know? And, and I, I was just, I just had a thought too, like when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're hard on yourself for not falling asleep or getting the sleep that you want, but you haven't changed any of the other stuff that could set you up for good sleep, then that's on you. Like look at something to change, you know, right. and then start doing that instead of just, Oh, I wake up and I'm hard on myself. Well, what did you, what did you do to make it easier on yourself? Well, I didn't do anything. Well, maybe we should start there then. <laughs> you know, right. maybe we should start exactly. It easier. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, that's okay. I mean, it's again, it's hard to pick one thing, but I would say, you know, the most common reason people say they can't sleep is because of stress. So, and of course that makes so much sense. And it's funny because when I wasn't sleeping, my stress levels felt through the roof, right? Like I had all this stuff going on, work, new business, new baby, all these things, and it just felt unmanageable. But actually, as soon as I figured out my sleep, my stress, like, you know, the external stressors stayed the same, but how I felt uh, did not feel as stressful. So it's just crazy how it just goes hand in hand with <laughs> not sleeping and feeling more stressed, but not sleeping because you're stressed. And so it's all just right. really interconnected. Um, but Absolutely. yeah, but managing your stress is a huge part of it. And so, you know, that, that needs to start really from first thing in the morning. Um, and, and, you know, making sure you're doing things throughout the day so that your cortisol levels aren't always just through the roof all day and all night long. And, and then taking some time to relax before bed is super key as well, because that, um, you know, gives your brain a chance to rest and relax and process the day um, and to wind down. Like we can't just expect to wake up to our alarm clock blaring, get up, go, go, go all day you know, fall in bed and fall asleep and sleep peacefully. It just doesn't work like that. That's, so. <laughs> that's funny because I, I think about the alarm clocks and I'm like, yeah, literally you're waking up to an alarm that's screaming at you, fire, fire, go, go, go. Exactly. <laughs> right. Cortisol release. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, cortisol has a bad rap. It's a very important hormone and it should be high in the morning. And that does wake right. us up and keep us focused throughout the day. But if it's really high all the time, you know, that's where it causes things like insomnia and lots of other health effects as well. So. Right. Right. So managing your stress help, helps manage your cortisol, which is right. extremely important in the management of your melatonin, which will help you sleep. Exactly. All right. All right. <laughs> you got, we got it. it. <laughs> All right. Uh, how can people get a hold of you, Martha? Well, my website is the complete sleep solution.com. And actually on there, I have um, an ebook you can sign up for. That's the five mistakes people make when they can't sleep. So there are two more that we didn't touch on today that you can get there as well. Perfect. So all of that will be linked in the show notes. If anyone wants to go snag that free ebook, her website will be in the show notes and you can do that. And I strongly suggest anyone having trouble with sleep that you do that. Um, yeah. Because like we said in the very beginning, it's everything. It, totally. your mental health starts and stops there. So pick that up. All right. Well, thank you so much, Martha, for being on with me. It was very fun and um, informative as well. So I look forward to uh, having you on again, perhaps. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave us a, um, a comment and make sure you subscribe to Kick Off Your Damn Heels. <laughs>